Hey everybody, it's Jim again with another wood turning video. Got a little longer one for you today. Basically a two for one because I'm going to be turning a bowl and a lid for that bowl. So hang in there. Got something a little bit different today. Getting a little tired of doing acacia and rosewood in Palo Verde. So I thought I'd dig into my woodshed and see if I could grab a piece of ash that I salvaged a little over a year ago and see how that goes. After I trimmed out the pith, I took a look at it and realized the bowl from this blank would have been really tall and I wasn't really up for that, so I decided to split it in half and just try one of them, especially since there was a lot of cracks and I really was not sure this thing was going to stay together at all, so uh, I didn't want to waste a whole huge chunk. I decided to use this piece because it was a little more square and it'll give me options in terms of dealing with the cracks. You can see they're pretty bad. They don't go all the way across, but they go a third to a half way. So it was my nervousness at this point, but I thought I'd give it a go. I really just wanted to see how the ash turned. I decided to use a worm screw for this instead of a face plate just because I wasn't sure I wanted to commit the time to the face plate with the cracks. Uh, and it was really, really dry, so the worm screw held really, really well. I have to apologize for the camera movement here. I have no idea why it's doing that. The camera is mounted to a shelf, which is mounted to the wall, and should be isolated from any vibrations from the lathe, but it turns out it wasn't, so I have to solve that problem in the next video. So my apologies. I'm actually really enjoying turning this ash, even with the cracks, which are still a bit of a worry. Uh, it's been a long time since I've worked with ash, since I used to make martial arts weapons with it. And uh, it really cuts nice and clean and leaves a really good finish. The tools are sharp. It's right about here that I realize I'm going to be able to get a bowl out of this, so I'm starting to get excited. As always, my excitement is tempered by caution, so while I was thinking about it and over lunch, I went ahead and poured some CA into the cracks just for insurance. So I decided to stop here in terms of the bottom since if I went any, any further towards the headstock I'd be actually encroaching on more and more cracks. So 
went ahead and formed the foot and the tenon and left it large so that uh, I had plenty of wood free of cracks to keep it strong. So as I start a hollowing here, I'm going for about a quarter inch to three sixteenths inch thickness. And since the wood is really dry, it's staying put and not vibrating too much. And it's cutting really clean. So things are going pretty well at this point. And there was much rejoicing. So as you can see, the cracks only went about a third of a way across. Not ideal, but uh, they kind of faded out and seemed pretty strong. So I was really happy at this point that uh, everything had held together and was turning into a nice little bowl. So just as a final step, I used some regular PVA wood glue and some sawdust and just sealed up the cracks on the inside just to make it feel a little bit smoother and finish a little bit more nicely. So here I'm using my new dust collection setup. I, I built a structure behind the lathe, kind of like a Richard Raffin style dust collector, but with my own little twist. And I'm adding a piece on the front, which for now is just that black dust sweep. Um, but I'm going to have something that may help uh, with chip collection on the front and dust collection as well. That may be a video of its own here in a little while. If you're enjoying my videos, I really appreciate if you give a like and a subscribe. Hit the bell for get notifications for new videos. Share the video if you enjoy it. 
really helped me out. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers to get YouTube partner and I'm really, really close. So any little bit helps and it's free. I really had forgotten how much I enjoy this wood. It finishes super smooth and it's got great warm tones. Uh, after the sanding sealer, I used some abrasive paste and polishing paste to really bring up the shine, which really shows up in the final result. So while I was waiting for the sanding sealer to dry in between coats, I started taking a look at the other piece of this log and what to do with it. And that's when I decided, you know what, it matches the other bowl, so why not try and make a lid? I uh, made some complications since I didn't plan on that ahead of time, but uh, I think the result turned out really nice and it was kind of fun, something new I've never done before. So what you can't see on the back side of the blank is a circle that I drew that indicates the outer diameter of the bowl that this is going to be a lid for. So it will just barely fit on this blank. So I have to be super, super careful to make sure I don't take too much material off. Otherwise the lid will just fall into the bowl and it won't do what I want it to do. So having to go slow and be real careful here. So the size of this lid needs to be about an eighth of an inch smaller than where the log just loses its flat spots. So this is where I have to stop a lot of times and just really make sure I'm not going too far. So my plan for this lid is that the outer part of the lid will overlap the bowl by about an eighth of an inch or so. And then there'd be a little lip to make sure the lid doesn't slide around and trying to make sure I don't cut the wrong part of this and uh, screw it up and make it too small or, or too floppy. So 
um, spent a lot of time thinking about how not to screw this up. So the part I've been putting off until now was figuring out what kind of a knob or something to pull the lid off. And here I'm thinking about just making it integral to the lid itself and not doing like another glued on finial or something like that. So I'm trying to figure out if I have enough height to do that and how I'll be able to hold it with my chuck with the knob still there. <laughs> So what I decided to do was make the knob smaller than the three and a half inch tenon I was going to use. And my three and a half inch chuck jaws are about an inch deep. So that would allow me an inch worth of material to create the knob. And I decided that that was probably enough to make it comfortable to lift off. So that's what you see me forming here. I'd left a little bit of a cylindrical portion on the on this part of the lid to uh, give me some room to play with to create a little lip and uh, extension to keep the lid in place. And here I'm just kind of flattening it off and making sure I have enough material and I know exactly where I'm going to cut.
So this was really the crucial part of the whole thing. If I did this wrong or cut a little bit too much in the spot, the lid would really be super loose uh, or it would fall down into the bowl. So I had to be really, really sure of what I was going to do next. almost blew it just there when I was starting a cut I kind of dug into my little retention lip and nearly carved it away which would have ruined what I had already planned out so luckily it uh, it worked out okay So since I essentially have two bowls here and I need to work the bottom side of both of them, I decided to go back to the first bowl and remove that tenon and clean that up. And then I would use my cold jaws to mount the lid and fully form that knob after this. And there was much rejoicing. So here's the lid in my coal jaws, and they basically grab the outer rim of the bowl and hold it really tight. And as long as I don't get too aggressive with my cuts, it, it'll stay pretty firm. I had to be pretty careful though because the space underneath the knob where your fingers would go was kind of tight and I didn't want to get a big catch so I was using my smaller half inch bowl gouge to do this work. So as you can see one thing I was pretty happy about on the knob was that the only figure of interest in this entire bowl blank is right where the knob is so I was able to preserve that and kind of make it a feature on the top there. Um, 
But I wish I would have done something just a little bit different with the top of the board. I wasn't super happy with the curvature and how the knob blended in with the rest of it, but I'll try something different next time. As you can see, it turned out beautifully. Super happy with the finish and super smooth to the touch. And stay to the end, you'll see the final pictures that I got up close with both the lid and the bowl together. And thanks for watching.